Hey guys, Vikas over here, and this is Weird Genius. Guys, today I'm with a new video around Raspberry Pi, and today we'll see how to use the I2C port of Raspberry Pi by using Java and Pi4j library. To use the I2C port of Pi, we are going to interface MCP23017 port expander IC, which comes with I2C interface. This IC actually comes with two versions, like MCP23017 and MCP230 S17. S17 comes with the SPI interface. But for uh, this tutorial, we are going to use the MCP23017 with I2C port only. The use of MCP23017 also gives you extra 16 GPIO pins to interface with other devices. The GPIO provided by MCP23017 can be used as input or output. The IC also features internal pull-ups and interrupt support, which makes it perfect to add some more GPIOs to your Pi. And you can stack up to 8 such chips to the same I2C bus by setting A0, A1 and A2 pins of the IC to different polarity like 3.3 volt or ground. And before starting this, if you are new to this Java and Pi 4J on Raspberry Pi, make sure to check out my earlier tutorials on this for which I have given the link down below in the description. So being said that, let's get started guys. So guys, this is the circuit connection of how to connect MCP23017 to the 40 pin GPIO header of Raspberry Pi. So first coming to the power, we have connected VDD and reset pin of the MCP23017 to directly 3.3 volt pin of the GPIO header of Pi. And the ground pin of MCP23017 is connected to the ground pin of the header. And other than that, there are two lines that is coming out of the 40 pin GPIO header that is the HDA and SCL that is as MCP23017 supports I2C communication. And those are connected directly to the HDA and SCL pin of MCP23017. And over here, as you know, I2C needs some pull up uh, registers. We have not connected here because the Raspberry Pi has internal or the onboard pull ups. So you don't be needing any external registers over here. Okay. Then coming on to the ports, we have connected eight LEDs to each pin of port A of MCP23017 by using some registers to limit the current. And on port B, we have connected a simple switch that is the tag switch, which when pressed gets connected to ground. And coming to the A0, A1 and A2 pins, those are called as the address pins are connected to ground to make the address of the MCP23017 module 0 cross 20. So if you are like connecting multiple MCP23017 module to the same Raspberry Pi, you should change the potential at different pins to make address uh, like different for each chip. So like if you are using two MCP23017, you can make all ground for a chip and on other chip, you can make the A0 pin 3.3 volt. So the address get changed. So like this, you can connect up to eight MCP23017 on a single I2C bus. And again, we'll get into details while checking out the data sheet of the MCP23017. What value of A0, A1, A2 like pins makes what address. Then over here, INT A and INT B are not used because we are not going to check for the interrupts. Uh, so let's quickly finish up the connections and we'll get back to the coding and we'll see how to interact with the MCP23017 module. So guys, these are the connections that I have made in accordance with the circuit diagram that I have shown earlier. And uh, these are different wires coming out of the Raspberry Pi 40 pin GPI header, like uh, the VC that is 3.3 volt ground HDI and SCL. And over here you can see the MCP23017 uh, like put on a breadboard. And over here I have a PCV of uh, containing 8 LEDs connected to the port A of uh, the MCP23017 and I have put a button over here connected to the port B pin 0 that is again uh, when it is pressed connects to ground and I have connected uh, other pins as I have shown earlier. So let's get back to the PC and we'll uh, check out the application to access different ports of the MCP23017. So as before getting into the coding, let's go through the data sheet first. And over here, uh, you can see 
there are two variants that is MCP23017 and MCP23S17. But uh, the only difference is uh, one is supporting in the I2C protocol and another one is supporting the SPI protocol. So we'll go ahead with the MCP23017 that supports the I2C protocol as I said earlier. So straightly let's jump into the serial communication because we are interested in that one. And over here on serial interface, you'll find the register addresses of different registers. So again, by default, that is Iocon Bank 0 is selected. And you'll find the different I2C addresses for different register banks. Like IODIR, AB, IOPOL, AB, GPIO, INTN, A, GPIO, INTN, B, DIF, VAL, A, DIF, VAL, V, and so on. So over here, uh, we are going to use IODR A and B that defines if particular pin you are using for like input or output. Then over here, I pull A, B, which shows actually if you set the particular the register, it will show us the inverted value, but we are not going to use over here. Then uh, the registers we are going to use is GPIO A, B, that is the pin values. So that is 0 cross 12 and 0 cross 13 address for the respective register. And other register that we are going to use is GPPU A and B. This defines the input pull up register. So if uh, the particular bit is set, then the particular uh, pin will be pulled off internally. Okay. So those are pretty helpful if you are using a particular pin for input. Then other registers are there, you can go through yourself like icon, int, con and all those things. Those are helpful for interrupts if you are working with interrupts with MCP23017. So there is like two types of interrupts are allowed like if you can, uh, if, if a certain pin states change that can generate interrupt or if uh, you have stored some value onto some register, it can check and if there is a division between the value, it can generate an interrupt. So you can go through all the document uh, like definitions over here, all the different registers and all how they work. I'm not going into detail with this tutorial. Okay, so you can check out by yourself. So let's get into the coding. Oh, one more thing uh, I just forgot is setting up the address that is addressing I2C device. So over here, you can see the slave address uh, that is in I2C, yeah, I2C control byte format. You can check is the slave address is depending upon the A0, A1 and A2 value. Okay. So the first, uh, the MSB is 0100, then A2, A1 and A0. Okay. So it's like the, uh, in our case, we have made all the three pins ground. That means 000 then 0010 that means this part constitutes uh, like uh, 0 uh, sorry uh, the so this part constitutes the value 2 that is 010 and this part constitutes the value 0 because all bits are 0 so like that you can uh, like uh, determine the slave address depending upon a2 a1 and a0 polarity like it is whether connected to 3.3 volt or it is connected to 0 so let's get to the uh, eclipse id and we'll see how to code for that and before that we just need to download the code from my github repository uh, for which actually i have given the link down below in the description so along with this code we just need to download the pi 4 j library uh, if you are newer with java application and gpi access with java on raspberry pi you should check my earlier tutorials on that to get started with Pi4j and Java on Raspberry Pi, for which actually I have given the link down below in the description. Now, from main Java, copy this total code over here with a small piece of code. Then, on Eclipse, create a new project. That is MCP two three zero one seven with Pi K 
create a new class uh, let's name it main you can include it and just paste the copied code over here uh, you can see errors over here because I have not added the pipe4j library to the build path so to do that uh, go on to build path configure build path then add external jars so again uh, for detail on this you can uh, check out my earlier tutorial on pipe4j and here we go so let's have a walk through to this code and we'll uh, certainly check out this example on uh, raspberry pi and we'll try to uh, like so coming over here the class definition and over here i have defined different registers like the mcp23017 address that is 0 cross 20 which again you need to change if you have connected a0 a1 and a2 pin of mcp23017 differently like if you have given different polarity then iodr a address that is 00, 0 iodr b register address that is 0, 01 which again these two registers defines the input or output capability of your mcp23017 then gpio a and b registers which defines the pin status of particular uh, like port those addresses are 12 and 13 respectively then gpu b register address because over here we are going to use the port b as input and port a as output that's why you have not configured input pull up registers for gpio or the port a and we have only configured the registers or uh, the input pull up registers for port b only okay then is the main class and which uh, are like so throwing out some exceptions if that happens then system dot out dot mcp 23017 that is example that is a simple print statement then i2c bus that is an object created from the i2c factory and uh, over here we have taken the i2c bus one and because we have connected uh, and this actually depends the version of pi you are using for my b plus module this is the bus one works perfectly but if you are having older then you can go ahead with bus zero but we'll see how to check this on terminal if you you are using bus zero or bus one okay then i2c device device then it's case device means we are just passing out the address for the mcp23017 and it will give up a object device by using which we can write or read from the mcp23017 so this this is simple i2c protocol that has been taken care by the pipe4j library okay then we are writing out idr a register value 00, 0. this defines the port a edge output so if you want to configure any port as inputs you can simply put up ff like over here on like port b we have defined ff right because we are using port b as input then device dot write gpu b register we have defined the value 0 cross ff means we are over here activating the internal pull ups for port b then under a while loop, true loop that means it continues forever we are checking out the pin status of port b of ncp23017 and we are making the gpio a register 0 then after some delay we are making it ff means this will produce a blink effect now let's do one thing i'll just change the code a bit so that when you press the particular button on port b uh, the blinking time will change okay now this if we end with one if this is like producing one sorry this has to be and 
hundred with two fifty four. Okay, I uh, will straightforward. We'll check it. If this equals to fifty four, that means uh, the button connected to GPIO. Uh, sorry, port B zero pin is pressed. That means we'll get a value to fifty four because that will make the first pin ground and the value will change. Uh, then we are going to change the delay value. Uh, so for that we need to define a variable delay and it will make it one second I just need to create this otherwise uh, ok I just delay thousand ok and ok mm. With each press, we are going to increase the value of delay, which uh, in terms going to increase the blinking effect delay. Okay, so we'll initialize with like thousand, and as you press the button, it is going to uh, like um, make the delay more. Okay, so we'll check that out. Now let's export as executable jar file. select the main clock ok before that we just need to run it once close it no issue go with export runnable java file and the application then the name you want to select so all this i have explained in depth in my earlier tutorial running application java application on raspberry pi so make sure to check that out now open up winnet cp or any ftp transport protocol uh, like application you are using for raspberry pi login and transfer the jar file and the leaf folder onto your pi and open up putty Now, uh, one more thing is, uh, if you have not enabled the I2C interface on your Pi, you just need to do that. And to do that, type on sudo config. Okay. And over here, uh, you can, uh, if you are using latest uh, version of your uh, Raspbian, then you should see an option like interfacing option. Or if you are using older one then you should see uh, you should uh, navigate into the advanced option uh, so I'll go ahead with interfacing options and over here click on I2C and click on yes okay and if you are using older version you will uh, get into advanced and you will see the I2C option listed over here okay so get on back click on finish then uh, to check if your uh, MCP23017 is being detected by Raspberry Pi, you can type on the command sudo sudo i2c detect minus y1 and you can see over here uh, that is 20 uh, that is the address of MCP23017 has been detected by Raspberry Pi. So over here the 1 is the bus number so if you are having older one you should go ahead to 0 but in my case it is one only and accordingly you need to change on your application like for me it is bus one and that is working perfectly and my pi is able to detect the mcp23017 connected to it so let's run the java application sudo java ja 
then uh, the path to it then the application name that is test dot char and now you can see it is printing out the port b red value that is 255 because we have activated the internal pull-ups and as all pins are one right now because of the internal pull-ups it is printing out 255 that means all pin are one okay now when i press the button tag button that we connected on the breadboard it will see a value 255 uh, sorry 254 printed onto the terminal so let's do it so guys over here you can see when i press the button i uh, will get a value 254 printed onto the terminal as well as the delay of this blinking will increase and as we have not uh, like used the interrupt so it should, you need to press the button for some time to get the value reflected on the registers so guys that's all for today thank you thanks for watching and hope it will help you with your project and uh, and you can uh, the hit the like button if you have liked this video and you can definitely subscribe to my channel for latest updates so see you next time with my next video till then goodbye